So today we are going to um, don't really do this often at all. But we're going to do a complete just back to basics supply demand 101. We'll do a combination of looking at some screenshots and also going into the live markets. Remember, like anything in life, when you're developing a skill set, in most cases, it's all about mastering the basics. I started my career on the trading floor of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Uh, that's where I learned all this, and that's where I uh, began to develop the original supply and demand strategy that we're going to go over here. And um, let's just let's dive in. So I'm going to take some very recent examples from last week and the week before, and uh, and show you. Um, why we chose the zones we did, how we identify supply and demand, and how we apply our structure and location rules to help determine where price is likely to turn and where price is likely to move to. If you have any questions, you can always ask them in the chat. And uh, what you see on the screen, by the way, before we get started, the screenshot on the left is uh, from our live trading and analysis sessions with our members at the Pinnacle Institute. And the screenshot on the right is the results. So uh, this is uh, from about two weeks ago right here. Here we had a demand zone. Now, um, when it comes to the structure of a demand zone, there are four things that have to be present in a demand zone as far as structure goes. And then um, the next thing is location, right? Structure and location. Once we have a qualified demand zone, where is it located? Is it inside the range or is it outside the range? So if we take a look here, again, in the spirit of back to basics, we had price trading here for a very short period of time, very short, and then a strong rally out of that level. Understand, if you're new to this, that that suggests there's a big supply-demand imbalance here on the demand side. Because if that statement was not true and supply and demand were equal, price would just keep trading sideways, right? But it didn't because it can't because supply and demand is out of balance there, right? Um, Two of the four things that need to be present are, you know, time and how did price move out of the area. There are two others, but for right now, let's stick with these. And um, those two things, again, suggest that there's a big supply-demand imbalance there. Now, location. Um, in our, our trading, our members trading, um, all of our sessions that you see here, um, almost every time we go over a zone or, or talk about a zone, one of the things we mentioned we, we go over is, is it inside the range or outside the range? Inside the range zones are lower probability. Outside the range zones are higher probability. Okay. So if you take a look at this zone, it's sitting below this range. The reason why price a number of times can't, get down to this zone right all this time is because the supply demand imbalance in this area is so great that price can't even get there we don't even get any trades in one of the you know highest volume markets in the world right the nasdaq the qqq but either way it doesn't matter that it's the qq the point is price can't get there because the supply demand imbalance is so great and that's what that's obviously what what uh, creates the range, right? All these ranges that we have are there because of, a, a, you know, too much, a lot of ton of supply on top, ton of demand on the bottom. Specifically, a big supply demand imbalance on top, big supply demand imbalance on the bottom. Now, when I say range a lot, I, I think sometimes people hear that and say, "Oh, we're talking about range trading, right? Like this, this only applies when a market is in a range." Well. I'm going to encourage you to think about it a little bit different. Um, all the market always does, even if it's, you know, big uptrends, big downtrends, 
these are all just a series of ranges that shift higher and shift lower. A, a, a nice uptrend, like we've seen, you know, many times before. Um, it's just a series of ranges moving higher. Okay. Think about buying and selling anything in life. It's all about wholesale prices and retail prices, right? Wholesale, retail, wholesale, retail. And, um, and even now is a, a interesting time to talk about it because the last, um, the last, uh, you know, many months around the world, the world has experienced, uh, at least, you know, at, at, at this point as a uh, pretty high inflation, meaning, Wholesale retail prices keep shifting higher for many goods and services around the world, right? So you can look at a chart and say, oh, there's been an uptrend in the price of food, right? But when you go down and look inside the chart, yeah, price goes up, then comes down, and then goes to a new high, and then goes down, you know, then comes down, back in the range, then goes to an, you know, so, so when we say range, <clears throat> this has nothing to do with just range-based range -based trading. Whether we're trading the financial markets or buying and selling anything in life, in a business, whatever, it's all about wholesale prices and retail prices. And that, those are our supply and demand zones. So if we start to put this together, we had an outside the range qualified demand zone down here, which is high probability. Um, next, now, Price came down and barely touched our outside the range demand zone. And it wasn't just the NASDAQ on this day. Other markets came down to <clears throat> their outside the range demand zones. I believe it was the Dow as well. But anyway, notice price just touches the zone and turns higher. That's because, again, uh, the location of this demand zone suggests that there's a huge imbalance here. Right? Um, now... There are other, let me try to find one here. For example, look right here where I'm pointing, or even right here on the same chart, it's fine. You see how we have rally, base, rally? Here, look here too. Okay. Actually, let's look on the chart on the left. Sorry about that. Take a look right here. Rally, base, rally. Then we have another rally, base, rally with a gap. Structure-wise, that looks great, right? But again, according to our rules and the original supply demand strategy rules, we would never take that as a demand zone. This is not equal to that. And I would argue, and most people would, that this demand zone, the look and structure of this demand zone with the gap probably looks better than this one. But this one with the gap, you can see over here, price goes right through it like it's not even there, but turns sharply at this one. Why? It's because of location. Just like real estate, location, location, location. Okay. Does that make sense? Another thing I want to point out, price um, for price to get to outside the range supply or demand zones, um, it usually, you know, it usually takes significant bad news or significant good news in other words a pretty strong trigger pretty strong trigger um it doesn't take big triggers to get price to inside the range supply demand zones but uh but outside the range zones it does so now let's talk about the governing dynamics of supply and demand and how this all works when price comes down to our qualified outside the range demand zone. Remember what demand is, competition to buy. And a lot of it uh, is, is what this zone is suggesting. So competition to buy causes price to turn, right? Because there's a significant imbalance down here, causes price to turn and pushes price higher. This middle, this range, right, is basically a big area of fair value. Fair value is the true magnet for price, so that just pulls price right back to it. If we focus on the news at all when making decisions to buy and sell, um, you're probably, you know, there's a good chance you're going to be a seller as price comes down to demand. 
But if you focus on the basic laws and governing dynamics of supply and demand, right, to make your buy and sell decision, you're probably going to be the buyer. We're not waiting for price to turn. We're not using any kind of confirmation entry. We focus on limit orders and, uh, and, and uh, protective stop orders and profit targets that are through the range. Okay. So uh, that was two weeks ago, right? Now, notice the rally that happened afterwards. Because now I'm going to take you to, um, let's move forward here. So now, uh, this is just uh, last week. So this is the uh, prep screen we share with our members uh, every morning uh, before we get into the live markets. Here. We had an inverse supply zone, right, with a stock market demand zone, inverse supply zone here. Now, you can see last week, price comes into the uh, inverse supply zone and falls, which lined up perfectly with our inside the range demand zone, okay? So notice the location, this is very important. Notice the location of this demand zone here, inside the range. This is last week. The week before, we came out to an outside the range demand zone. So once we turned and rallied two weeks ago, right? This, this, this was two weeks ago. Once we did that, then we had inside the range demand zones develop here, and this was one of them. Does everybody see the difference? This zone is inside the range. Does that make sense? Okay. Remember, inside the range zones are going to be lower probability. Now, the first time price came back to this area, uh, just the other day, we had a nice little bounce from here. And then, of course, we went deeper into the zone here. And um, no surprise that we went deeper into the zone. Um, so first, that was the second time into the area. And two, we expect to go deeper into inside the range zones than we do outside the range zones. Okay? And the fact that we were coming into an inside the range demand zone, which is lower probability, that's when we want to make sure that we have some inverse help with this. Okay. We, we, we don't, according to our rules, we don't just take this, uh, we don't just take this trade right here. We want to make sure that we have inverse help, which we did. And that was this one. Okay. Does that make sense? Any questions, comments on this so far? Because again, the structure of the demand zones are, you know, they're they're going to be they're going to be similar all over. Uh, yeah, yeah, Andy. Yes, definitely. Any time frame. The only thing that changes, right? It's always the same set of rules. Uh, it's it's all one set of rules, and any any market, stocks, futures, forex, options, crypto, all that. Um, and more. The only thing that changes is if you're a day trader, we have a, you know, there's there's a certain set of time frames for that. As a swing trader, there's a certain set of time frames for that. As a longer term investor, long term position trader, there's a certain set of time frames for that. But but everything else uh, is the same. It's one set of rules for any and all markets. So, uh, Kareem, I think you're, um, so let's go back here. So, I think you're asking, um, once price turns at the demand zone and then starts to gain momentum to the upside, how do you place market orders? Is that a, are you talking about a market order to buy or to sell? Uh, it looks like you're saying to sell. 
So, um, well, let me just say, let me just say this first. Uh, we use limit orders for everything, not the protective stop, but a limit order for the entry. Everything we do is rule-based. So we have a um, entry stop and target, obviously very specific rules for all that. We want to take the, all the thinking out of it. But the entry into any market and the exit in any market for us is always a limit order. Okay. The protective stop to manage the risk will be a stop market because we want to make sure that uh, if it needs to get executed, that it gets executed. So, Kareem, a little bit more to your question there. Let's say, because I think what you're kind of suggesting too, I could be wrong, is let's say price turns at this demand zone here two weeks ago, and for whatever reason, you missed the trade, you don't get it. Now, it's a week later, and we have now an inside the range demand zone. So maybe there's still a chance to get in. We would still use a limit order here. Does that make sense? And let me catch up in the chat. Okay. So I, I would I wouldn't uh, I don't think it's the momentum that would hurt uh, if, if you're trying to sell short at a zone, right? It's not it's not it's probably not the momentum of price moving up that's going to hurt. It's that that zone was probably right in the middle or somewhere in the middle. It's the location because you'll see that almost always when we come to an outside the range demand zone, momentum is strong to the downside. Just like when we come to Outside the range supply zones, momentum is always going to be high to the upside, but that's what we want. Adrian, correct. When we, when we, um, yeah, outside the range zones, we don't, uh, we don't really need any help. You'll, you'll often have it, but you don't, uh, you don't really. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not that necessary. Let's go to the live markets here. And I wanna share with you uh, something else that we had. Here's another inverse market. And just waiting for this one chart to come up here. Yeah, so here we had Notice the date here, this is the 24th. It's the US dollar into a supply zone, right? With a nice profit zone, at least down to here, okay? So that's the 24th when we came into that um, supply zone. And you can see, let's go here. So you could see not only did we have another inverse market here uh, help at supply, but you can see when the stock market itself, the S&P, the NASDAQ, the Dow, all that, um, when these were into demand, the dollar was right into this. Does that make sense? So it's really putting this whole puzzle together, but and, and again, while it may look um, simple, and I would argue that the rules and logic um, are not that difficult, the act of doing it is is what's uh, is what's difficult for people. Okay, it's just putting this puzzle together and making sure that you're focusing on inside the range and outside the range zones. Um, and I can pull up any market here that you want to, if you want me to. Um, it's only, uh, the dollar's only, I wouldn't say the dollar's key. It's it's one market in our uh, group of markets. Sometimes it's going to help, sometimes it's not. But it's, again, it's where, it's all structured location, right? And obviously we have rules around putting that puzzle, uh, putting that puzzle together. Uh, just looking here, let's see. If anyone has a market, yeah, they're all in pretty big ranges, which is great. Um, that's great. 
So if anyone has a market they want to look at, yeah, we can look at crypto also. Again, these the rules, we apply the rules the same way in every market. So uh, all right, I so see you want uh, Bitcoin. Let's take a look. So you can see Bitcoin actually came into a huge, uh, out, when I say huge, I just mean a, a significant outside the range demand zone a uh, little ways back. For those of you that have been in our sessions, our FX Street sessions for a while, you probably remember a ways back we went over this one and price ultimately came down to the, uh, to the demand zone here. And now we're rallying. And um, it looks like we actually have a new supply zone that just developed above uh, right up here. So, and uh, and with a nice little profit zone below. So we'll see there. Uh, yes, we could definitely take a look at the Euro. Let's go look at that. This is all about quantifying supply and demand uh, in all these markets so we can identify not just any old imbalance but the significant imbalance because the significant imbalance is where price is most likely to turn. All right, so looking at the euro. So basically the euro is um, it just obviously just turned at the uh, at the demand zone here. Looks like there's plenty of room up to the 110, but um, let's go over here. We're gonna have more zones. So here's a so after that turn, here's now an inside the range, new inside the range demand zone that developed. It's the 108.35. Okay. And then I believe we have a posing inside the range supply zone here. So anything below 110 is going to be inside the range. Now, again, we walk through the. Um, uh, yeah, so Dan, we don't you're not going to find supply and demand zones uh, on every time frame. But the reason we look at multiple time frames and then we'll walk through this zone right here is because. We want to make sure that we can identify where that significant supply demand balance is. Yeah, Kareem, in, in, a, in a bull market, right? So price is going up. There, there's, unless it's making new highs, there's going to be a fresh outside the range supply zone uh, somewhere above that. We just need to look to the left and go up in price and find it. Okay. So, um, here is, so let's take a look at this one, the 109.19, okay? So, um, price is trading sideways. Again, I just want to, in the spirit of uh, the, the purpose of the session, let's go back to basics. Price is trading sideways. Supply and demand appears to be in balance. All of a sudden, there's a drop in price, okay? Understand that drop in price happens because supply exceeds demand here. So that we know to be true, okay? That we know to be true. But now what we need to figure out is how big is the imbalance there, right? The only reason why price falls from here is because supply exceeds demand. But how big is the imbalance? That's what we need to figure out. In other words, is it is it a big enough imbalance to where when price comes back to it, the probability of price turning is high or low. Okay, because most of I would argue that most of these, when you see this this picture alone, um, most of the time it's going to be in the middle and it's it's going to fail. Right, that's why you have to focus on that structure and location. It's 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 not complicated, but it's it's very important to focus on that structure and location. Okay, so. Again, let's walk through structure. Two of the four structure pieces we need to look at. How much time did price spend at the level? In other words, was it a lot of time or a little? And two, how did price leave the level, right? How did price leave the level? So we see those two things here and um, both of those are fine. 
there's um there are two other you know uh structure components that have to be present and um and then location right so let's focus on location here for a minute if i um i could go to other time frames and 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 see where this is at but one quick and easy way to do this let me get let me move this thing here real quick there we go now watch i'm just going to put this on a much larger time frame so there's where that little supply zone is that we're talking about so this is still inside the range okay this is still going to be inside the range we need to get above these pivot highs to go outside the range which brings up another point and all i did was change that 15 minute chart to a daily chart now we go back to the 15 minute chart there's the zone we know it's inside the range we know it's a little lower probability it has the structure requirements we're looking for so the other thing we can do is see hey do we have a little bit of inverse help here any market we're going to look at has inverse markets uh, with it okay so um all right let's move on so there's that zone i saw there are other markets that people want to look at so let's go apply this to some others and um i think gold was the next one did you want to look at uh do you want to look at the gold futures or gld it really doesn't matter um i can just let me click on it and you can let me know if it's this is not what you want to look at but let's go take a look at Let's take a look at, we'll start with the futures. Most people want to look at the futures, uh, but we can certainly look at the uh, GLD also. So after turning higher at our uh, demand zone here in the 1810 area, and by the way, another point here, notice we just touched the area, okay? Notice we just touched the area. So that suggests, right, that suggests that there's a still a big enough imbalance here to where we'd expect prices to turn again. We use the rule of 50%. In other words, until price moves more than halfway into this zone, we will expect it to keep turning, right? A, an opposing supply zone may be created somewhere up here, which would limit the profit zone. But as far as this zone itself and price turning, we use that rule of 50%. Doesn't matter how many times price comes back to the zone, um, what matters is how deep uh, price goes into the zone. So here is the uh, a more a um, you know, little bit smaller smaller time frame, smaller picture. Obviously, this is what the near term range in gold is likely to be. And notice this is all in the context of a you know a, an uptrend for the past couple weeks, right? It's just range and then moving higher. That's all this is. I hear you, Ari. Yep. Yep. All right. Yeah, Rick, I'll I'll definitely uh try to hit that again. So here we have a uh good structure supply zone. Now is this zone inside the range or outside the range? Inside the range or outside the range? It's inside, yes. Okay. So a little bit lower probability, but that's okay. Now we have members at the Pinnacle Institute that only focus on outside the range zones. Uh, Kareem, it's just, just like you see here, gold is a rising market. We've had plenty of demand zones, right? Occasionally price doesn't make it back to the demand zone. Most of the time it does, right? It's all about, and what we haven't talked about yet is profit zone. Profit zone is everything, the ability to identify the, the true and proper profit zone is key because once we can do that, then we can, then we know risk reward, we know position type, we know position size, we know entry, stop, target. Without the proper profit zone, you, you can't really determine any of that. And often you're just gonna get it wrong. You know what I mean? Okay. So uh, yeah, we would expect price to stay in here until either all the sell orders are filled on the supply side or all the buy orders are filled on the demand side. Make sense? Okay. 
All right. Let's keep going here. And um, let me go to another market. Uh, someone wanted a, another Forex market here and oil. And again, we can we can look at markets and you know educate at the same time. Since uh, since on my screen here, we're very close to oil. It was like right here. Let's uh, let's stop and take a quick look. Okay. I don't know. We were near a. Uh, yeah, oil has just really moved from demand to supply pretty quickly. You'll see here. So um, this is the oil chart we've been going over every day with our members. Um, and uh, and oil's just doing, you know, when I look at this chart, you know, I know it's so many years later, but in the back of my mind, I'm still like on the trading floor, right? Here's where the significant buy orders are down here. Here's where the significant sell orders are up here. And price is just going to move from one side to the other side until those orders are gone. And then price will move to the next set of orders. That's what markets always do. Um, but now both of these sides are tested. So until they're tested, uh, until we've gone 50% um, into these zones, we expect the zone to, uh, we expect price to turn again. Okay. But be, be careful. Let's let me let me just remind you of rain, of of location because you're going in the middle, right? You're going to get rally base rally. You're going to get drop base drop. You're going to get that in the middle. The majority of these are not going to work. Right? We can look back at stuff like this. You're going to see there's there's drop base drop. You'll find some rally base rallies. The majority are not going to work. All about structure and location. Um, if if so, good good question there, Khan. So if the risk reward is attached to this, right? Because the profit zone still is is only down to 67, right? So if you're selling here and risking to just up here, the profit potential and uh, the way we we measure it is not all the way down to the demand. It's just before the demand. We 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 try to capture 80% of the profit zone. So if I'm kind of just eyeballing this and doing the numbers in my head, it looks like this is about a maybe a little bit more than a two to one opportunity. Um, for us, we wouldn't take that. We want a bigger risk reward opportunity, but that that's what the chart, that's what the oil market oil chart is offering from here. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, let's keep going. Now, uh, let's see. Ah, what about this zone right here? All right, let's see who can start to put this together. Is this an inside the range zone or an outside the range zone? Inside the range or outside the range? Take a look at the price, right? 70. Now let's go look at where this zone is. I wanted to see who noticed that I went down to a little bit smaller time frame. Now let's go look at 70 right here. Right? There it is. So now the profit zone is even worse. This area could work, but again, it's it's um it's low probability. Now, if maybe we have some dollar supply with this and maybe another inverse, you know zone uh, from an from an inverse market then perhaps but again why even get involved with something like this when if you have the ability to identify the low risk high reward and high probability opportunity why mess with anything else you know what i mean and this is a, this is a scenario where even now we've been going over this chart for over a week with uh in in the pinnacle sessions and you can say look th this is probably what price is going to do but it's probably not a trade we want to take you know not every opportunity makes uh, makes sense. And remember too, with profit zone, the um, the larger the profit prof, profit zone and probability go hand in hand. Okay, profit zone and probability go hand in hand. The larger the profit zone, typically the higher the probability. 
Okay. Um, you know, we're doing this webinar here today uh, on a day where um, the markets are just really in the middle. And in fact, let me show you. So let's look at the NASDAQ for a minute. Let's go to the NASDAQ. Watch, I'll show, I'll show you what I mean. Right? So the NASDAQ is just, you can see the range on the daily chart here, right? Even if I go over here to like, I don't know, the four hour chart, it's just this, this we've gone nowhere, right? In fact, in the big picture, it's been since, you know, April or May of last year, we're just in this range that's just gotten tighter and tighter, right? So a key zone that we um, have been tracking, if the NASDAQ does uh, move a little bit higher, I'm gonna take you to XLK. This is the technology sector ETF. And a zone that was key for us this week, right, suggesting the markets were likely to go lower, is found right here. Look where this one is. In fact, I'm going to go to a daily chart um, right here, and you'll see this is what the NASDAQ has done over the past, uh, you know, the past four or five days. Does everybody see that? Look at the 148 up here. Is that an inside the range zone or outside the range zone? This has been very key for us, this zone right here this week. This suggested be careful buying anywhere near this thing, right? Clearly it's an outside the range zone. In fact, we haven't even been back there since you know, August of last year, okay? Yeah, so that's been key. And you can, again, these outside the range zones, Sometimes price, you know, you can see it couldn't even get there. That That's how big the imbalance is. Now, the fact that that outside the range zone has a gap with it, you know, even, even, uh, even better, even stronger. Looks like we're coming into this zone again. Um, now, this has a greater than 50% pullback, so we wouldn't expect this to hold up again. And then there's room down to the 130, uh, 136 area. What about this right here? Rally, base, rally, what about that? What's the problem with that one? Structure-wise, it looks okay. It's not great. It's right in the middle of the range. Low probability, very low probability. Okay? So, No, con, um, nothing. When it, when it comes to confirmation, all we care about is structure, location, nothing else. If we have some inverse help, great. If we, if, we're, um, if we don't have it, you know, but we have a nice profit zone, what have you, that's, that's, that's okay. It all depends on, you know, what, what your rules say, right? But it's all about uh, structure, location. So I want to share something with you here. Um, what I put in the chat, for those that want to take this deeper and learn more about this, you can always come to one of these. Um, these are free workshops. And um, there's the link in the chat if you like. Uh, we, do cover, uh, we do cover what we talked about here in these uh, workshops. You can see when the next one, there's one actually tomorrow. And then um, and another one on Saturday. And then has anyone been through the Elevate experience uh, with us? Maybe even with me? Has anybody been through Elevate? Uh, in Elevate, you know, we obviously spend a whole week together and go over all this stuff, but you, you get a lot of this information in these uh, in these workshops here. So, um, okay, good. Yeah. So try to cover as much as possible in the 45 minutes we have together here. Hopefully that was helpful. And um, we'll be back. And um, we'll see when the next one is. And um, we'll see you then. Always good to be with you. Great interaction in the chat. And uh, we'll see you next time.